Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International with me Keith Johnston. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa chaired the weekly cabinet meeting at Gadebia Palace. The Cabinet highlighted the importance of the official meeting between His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and the UAE President, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nayan, at His Majesty's residence in Abu Dhabi. The Cabinet emphasised that the meeting further strengthened relations between the two countries and their peoples. His Royal Highness also directed relevant entities to support Bahraini citizens participating in the Hajj pilgrimage. He commended the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia under the leadership of the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud, and in support of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Mohammed bin Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud, for the commitment to ensure a seamless Hajj season. The Cabinet noted Bahrain's success in retaining a Tier 1 status in the US Department of State's Trafficking in Persons report for the sixth consecutive year. The annual publication provides an assessment of global efforts to combat human trafficking. Bahrain's high rating reflects its competency in mitigating issues of trafficking. The Cabinet attributed th th this achievement to the Kingdom's comprehensive development, led by His Majesty the King and supported by the Government under the leadership of His Royal Highness. The Cabinet monitored progress on the implementation of His Royal Highness's directives to hold events and exhibitions that raise awareness on housing finance services and programmes for Bahraini citizens. In this regard, the Minister of Housing and Urban Planning reviewed the success of the exhibition in achieving its objectives. The Cabinet congratulated the graduates of the Bahrain Teachers College and expressed their appreciation to the Board of Directors and staff for the efforts in driving academic excellence, resulting in the largest number of graduates in the history of the College. The Cabinet then congratulated the Chairman, Board, staff and players of the Al Najma Club on winning the 25th Asian Men's Club League Handball Championship and the Manama Club on being champions at the inaugural FIBA West Asia Super League. The Cabinet commended the athletes of both sports clubs and their wins and their role in affirming Bahrain's position as a leader on the global sports stage. The Cabinet approved the following. A memorandum submitted by the Government Executive Committee regarding a strategy to develop Bahrain Polytechnic, which contains several components designed to develop Bahraini skills, double the number of available study seats and provide programmes across all governorates of the Kingdom. A memorandum submitted by the Government Executive Committee regarding a number of procedures related to enhancing the stock of medicine. A memorandum submitted by the Ministerial Committee for Finance and Economic Affairs and Fiscal Balance on the outcomes of the Financial Services Sector Development Strategy 2022-2026, Review and Related Initiatives and Targets that Fall Under Developing the Kingdom's Promising Sectors, outlined in the Economic Recovery Plan. A memorandum submitted by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs regarding an MOU between the Ministry of Municipality Affairs and Agriculture and the Spatial Planning and Construction of the Slovak Republic. A memorandum submitted by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs outlining the framework for collaboration between government hospitals and the University of Bahrain across health education, training and scientific research and a memorandum by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs and the Government's response to four proposals submitted by the Council of Representatives. The Cabinet then took note of the following Ministerial reports. Participation in the 32nd Ordinary Session of the Council of the League of Arab States at the summit level. Outcomes of the Minister of Foreign Affairs' visit to the Italian Republic. Outcomes of the 156th session of the Ministerial Council of the Gulf Cooperation Council, the GCC. Participation in a second ministerial meeting between the members of the League of Arab States and the Pacific Small Island Developing States. Participation in the 111th session of the International Labour Conference. Outcomes of the Minister of Sustainable Development's visit to the UAE. Participation in the Arab China Business Conference.
His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister and Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa met with the Chairman of the Supreme Council of Health, the SCH, Lieutenant General Sheikh Dr. Mohammed bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, Akadabia Palace. His Royal Highness highlighted Team Bahrain's expertise and competence in the health sector, one of the vital sectors contributing to the Kingdom's comprehensive development goals, led by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. His Royal Highness commended the Chief Executive Officer of the National Health Regulatory Authority, the NHRA, Dr. Mariam Ajalahma, and receiving the 2023 Nelson Mandela Award for Health Promotion and noted admirable contributions to the Kingdom's health sector in the last 30 years. His Royal Highness also commended the Kingdom's medical professionals for their contributions to the Kingdom's goals and progress in the health sector. His Royal Highness expressed pride in Bahraini citizens' achievements and contributions to the Kingdom's progress across many fields. For their part, the Chairman of the SCH and CEO of the NHRA expressed their gratitude with meeting His Royal Highness and for his continuous support to the Kingdom's health sector. They also reiterated their commitment to developing the health sector. The Minister of Finance and National Economy Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa and the Minister of Health Jalila Hassan also attended the meeting. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa met with several public school principals whose students achieved the highest secondary averages for the academic year 2023 to 2023 Agadebia Palace. His Royal Highness highlighted that His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa's commitment to educational reforms has spurred government initiatives and programmes that strive for educational excellence across the Kingdom. His Royal Highness emphasised the importance of strengthening quality education for all citizens to achieve the Kingdom's far-reaching educational goals. He noted that education is a core pillar for the Kingdom's development to build qualified professionals that meet the standards of the national labour market. His Royal Highness emphasised that investing in Bahraini citizens remains a top priority and the government efforts focus on educational excellence to make Bahrainis a first choice in the job market. His Royal Highness congratulated the outstanding students in public schools and noted the diligence of the administrative and educational staff in ensuring pupils receive the best educational standards in the Kingdom. His Royal Highness encouraged the schools to continue offering respect to academic and educational environment that reinforces student excellence. He thanked the Ministry of Education for contributing to the development and the progress of the Kingdom and its people. His Royal Highness highlighted the importance of adopting modern technology, artificial intelligence and innovative solutions to keep pace with global developments and enhance educational creativity in line with the Kingdom's educational aspirations. For their part, the principals of the top public schools expressed their gratitude for the opportunity to meet with His Royal Highness and their appreciation for His Royal Highness's commitment to supporting the Kingdom's educational development. The Minister of Finance and National Economy, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, the Minister of Cabinet Affairs, Hamid bin Faisal Al Malki, and the Minister of Education, Dr. Mohammed bin Mubarak Juma, also attended the meeting. The staff reiterated their commitment to enhancing educational standards and student outcomes in their schools. The principals who attended the meeting included Hashimiya Al Sayed, Hassam Sharaf, the principal of Saar at Secondary Girls School, Fatima Ahmed Eid, the principal of Maharak Secondary School for Girls. Haifa Mohammed Kazim Buhamoud, the principal of Al Istiklal Secondary School for Girls. Ali Abdullah Mohammed Al Banam, the principal of Maharak Secondary School for Boys. Yasser Ibrahim Ali Beni Hamad, the principal of Al Hadaya Al Khalafiya Secondary Boys School. Al Najafar Ahmed Al Bana, the principal of Isa Town Secondary School for Boys. It's worth noting that the Maharak Secondary Boys School ranked first among the boys' schools, where students obtained the highest averages in the secondary level for the academic year 2022 to 2023. Al Hadea Al Khalafiya Secondary Boys' School ranked second, followed by Isa Town Secondary Boys' School. 
Additionally, Sar Secondary Girls School ranked first among girls schools, followed by Maharak Secondary Girls School and Al Esiklal Secondary Girls School. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, issued a circular regarding the Arafah and Eid al Adha holidays. According to the circular, the Kingdom's ministries and public institutions will be closed on the day of Arafah and Eid al Adha, corresponding to the 27th and 30th of June, respectively. The circular added that as Friday is already an official holiday, Sunday, July the 2nd, will be given in lieu. The representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs and Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, His Highness Sheikh Nas bin Hamad Al Khalifa, chaired the SCYS meeting in the presence of the first Deputy Chairman of the SCYS, Chairman of the General Sports Authority and President of Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, as well as senior officials and SCYS members. His Highness Sheikh Nasser praised the efforts of His Highness Sheikh Khalid as well as the recent sports achievements in which Al Najma Club won the 25th Asian Men's Club League Handball Championship and the Manama Club on being champions at the inaugural FIBA West Asia Super League. His Highness welcomed the new members and congratulated them on the Royal Trust by appointing them in the Council and wished them all success. He also expressed thanks to the former members for their role in developing the youth and sports sector. He also praised the National Strategy for Youth Empowerment, which covered the most important pillars of youth work and priorities aimed at developing the role of youth through a number of projects that hone their skills and the new Masari project, which provides promising opportunities for young people to learn, increase knowledge, create job opportunities and support the educational system of the Kingdom of Bahrain. The Council then discussed the projects of the Ministry of Youth Affairs, which are being implemented, especially the Youth City 2030 project. The members also discussed the fifth edition of the King Hamid Award for Youth Empowerment in order to achieve sustainable development in cooperation with UNDP, and that the study and implementation of this edition will begin during this year and end in November of the year 2024. The GSA then discussed the recent developments of the sports sector in the Kingdom and recent achievements. The Council was also briefed on the proposal of the GSA to develop a plan to build sports as an industry, increase opportunities to benefit from sports facilities, cooperate with the private sector in a number of strategic opportunities and programmes and cooperate with stakeholders to increase sports tourism. The GSA touched on the National Action Aspirations Programme which was announced last week under the directors of His Highness Sheikh Khalid, which aims to develop Bahraini sports and includes pioneering initiatives and programmes to develop the sports sector, as well as the Bahraini Sports Summit. The Council expressed keenness to continue the efforts in order to achieve further successes and develop the youth and sports sector in the Kingdom. BDF Commander-in-Chief Field Marshal Sheikh Khalif bin Ahmed Al Khalifa received the 48th BDF Hajj mission on his departure to Mecca in the presence of the Minister of Defence Affairs, Lieutenant General Abdullah bin Hassan Al Nuaymi. The Commander-in-Chief conveyed to them the greetings of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, the Supreme Commander of the Armed Forces, and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, a Deputy Supreme Commander of the Armed Forces and Prime Minister. Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, wishing them a safe trip. He commended the royal support for sending a group of BDF employees to perform Hajj annually, which demonstrates His Majesty the King's appreciation for BDF personnel. He recalled the sacrifices made by the martyrs of the homeland, praying to Allah the Almighty to rest their souls in eternal peace, and wished a speedy recovery for the injured. The Commander-in-Chief praised the efforts of the Government of the Custodian of the Two Holy Mosques in organising the Hajj season and providing pilgrims with a seamless experience.
Under the patronage of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Amman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the Cityscape Bahrain Exhibition, the largest real estate event in the Kingdom, will be held on November the 14th until the 16th at Exhibition World of Bahrain. On this occasion, a President of the Survey and Land Registration Bureau and Chairman of the Higher Organising Committee of the Exhibition, Sheikh Salman bin Abdullah bin Hamad Al Khalifa, praised the support of His Majesty the King and His Royal Highness of the real estate sector in the Kingdom. He expressed thanks and appreciation to His Royal Highness for his patronage of the exhibition, adding that this exhibition this year will focus on sustainability and digital transformation in the real estate sector, by promoting innovative solutions that achieve sustainable development goals, which are in line with Bahrain's economic vision at 2030. Under the patronage of the Chairman of the Supreme Council of Health, the SEH, Lieutenant General Sheikh Dr. Mohammed bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, and in the presence of the Minister of Works, Ibrahim Al Hawaj, the Minister of Health, Dr. Jalila Hassan, the Ministry of Works handed over the newly built NBB Multiple Sclerosis Centre to government hospitals. The SEH chairman appraised the efforts of the competent authorities in following up on the establishment and implementation of this project and other infrastructure projects for the health sector in Bahrain. He noted that the establishment of the centre is one of the most important developmental achievements aimed at serving a special category of patients to meet the basic needs and provide comprehensive and advanced treatment services. The centre is considered the first specialised and independent medical facility in terms of building and equipment for the treatment of MS patients. The Minister of Labour, Jamil Humaydan, inaugurated the 11th Consultative Forum with the employers, which was organised by Alia University, with the participation of specialists, academics and those concerned with training and employment policies in various educational, commercial and economic sectors. The Minister stressed the importance of achieving harmony between education outputs and the needs of the labour market, which are priorities of relevant authorities, to continue developing education and training. The Forum stressed the importance of investing in developing people and the educational system and strengthening cooperation between educational institutions and training centres with employers to develop appropriate solutions to the challenges facing our graduates. The Forum reviewed the development of educational curricula in universities and enhancing them with the necessary skills required in light of the needs of the labour market. The Royal Humanitarian Foundation continues its efforts in charitable and humanitarian work inside and outside the Kingdom of Bahrain, especially in the education field, through the building of schools and universities in various countries of the world. To speak more about this, we are joined by RHF Secretary General, Dr. Mustafa Al Said. Hello, Dr. Al Said. Hi, uh, good evening. First, first, we would like to congratulate you on the Royal Humanitarian Foundation winning of the Handan Isesco Prize of Voluntary Development of Education Facilities in the Islamic World. Can you tell us more about the ongoing efforts of the RHF and how do you value such recognition? Thank you very much for inviting me to talk about this. And uh, your ministry is one of our biggest support and strength in promoting our uh, objectives and aims and projects and achieving success. Thank you. In terms of uh, importance, it is uh, important to thank His Highness uh, or His Majesty the King uh, His Royal Highness Crown Prince and Sheikh Nasser for his leadership of the Royal Humanitarian Foundation. We have achieved, thank God, a great success for winning, as you mentioned, uh, Sheikh Hamdan, Sheikh Rashid bin Hamdan, uh, uh, ISISCO Award for Best Humanitarian Project in the field of education. This is uh, competing with 40 countries in the world, big countries, and we got it for uh, not only the size and the type of the project, but also in the way we treat 
people whom we meet with respect, dignity, without discrimination. This was a uh, fruit of a number of projects carried out by the Royal Humanitarian Foundation as supported uh, by His Majesty the King and led by His Highness Sheikh Nasser. Uh, Several hospitals, uh, several uh, of course hospitals, as well as uh, educational institutions of great qualities, uh, were built around the world uh, and in Bahrain as well. Naming Sheikh Nasser Training Center, for example. Uh, but the reason we got this award was for Somalia, which did not have any form of infrastructure or multi-story building for 20 years because of the war. And when we built our uh, outstanding school with seven colleges and the first major project in Somalia encouraged many other people to copy us and we have no objection at all and people go copying us for good causes and uh, we want it for our Somalia project, which in itself was a great challenge. We faced a lot of difficulties, but we ended up with a beautiful result. RHF Secretary General, Dr. Mustafa Asayed, thank you for joining us. The Kingdom of Bahrain joins the countries of the world in celebrating the International Day to Combat Hate Speech amid a number of pioneering initiatives launched by Bahrain to promote the values of coexistence and reject hatred at the local and international levels in implementation of the directives of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. More in this report. Celebrating the International Day Against Hate Speech is an opportunity to express pride in the wise approach of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, who has strengthened the status of the Kingdom of Bahrain as a model of tolerance and respect for religious, cultural and ethnic diversity. A long history of initiatives related to combating hate speech launched and achieved by the Kingdom of Bahrain at the local and international levels. This international occasion coincides with the consolidation of the Kingdom of Bahrain's position in the first category in the field of combating trafficking in persons, according to the reports of the U.S. State Department for the sixth year in a row, and the continuation of its pioneering role in spreading the culture of peace, combating violence, extremism and terrorism, supporting religious and cultural dialogue and international humanitarian action through the contributions of the King Hamad Global Center for Peaceful Coexistence and the Royal Humanitarian Foundation to prove its firm values and wise policy of respecting human rights and dignity without discrimination. Promoting dialogue and coexistence between religions and cultures in combating hate speech represents an essential dimension in the National Plan for Human Rights, the National Plan for Promoting National Affiliation and Consolidating Citizenship Values, as well as the government's program and its diplomatic priorities and regional and international forums within the framework of a wise vision of His Majesty the King and the wise directives of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. The National Health Regulatory Authority participated in the 26th St. Petersburg International Economic Forum held in Russia, during which it outlined the role of the NHRA in the health sector in Bahrain and offered investment opportunities in the health sector in Bahrain. To speak more about that, we have with us on the phone the Head of Health Facilities Regulation Department in the NHRA, medical consultant Dr. Hesse Suba Aldossari, who represented the Kingdom of Bahrain. Hello, Dr. Hesse. Tell us about NHRA's participation in the forum and your presentation about Bahrain's health regulation experience. 
Yes, uh, good evening. Uh, first of all, uh, thank you for shedding light on the participation of the National Health Regulatory Authority in this global forum. Uh, actually, the St. Petersburg International Economic Forum is considered a leading global platform for business community members uh, to meet and discuss key economic issues. Uh, and one of these issues uh, is the economy and health. NHRA participated in this forum where we elaborate on how the health sector in the kingdom is regulated in terms of regulating licensing, licensing of uh, health facilities, licensing of health professionals with all their requirements to issue a license, um, regulating the importation and registration of pharmaceutical products, uh, as well as uh, we discussed the, re the regulation in regard to registration of medical devices. Uh, uh, we noticed an interest of, from several Russian medical companies to discuss ways of cooperation in medical training programs, and that was uh, discussed thoroughly, especially nowadays it can be performed on a wider spectrum and on a more feasible way with online technology. Um, uh, moreover, we discussed tips regarding exchange of uh, experts and uh, uh, experiences in several medical specialties between the two countries, uh, because the, uh, these can, uh, uh, because through that, we, uh, these steps we can take the advantage of each expert in his field of specialization under the umbrella of regulation. Uh, we also took the opportunity of our presence in the forum and we participated in a plenary session titled International Cooperation in the Name of Health, uh, in which we discussed areas of investment in the kingdom and several fields in medical sector, such as investing in health facilities uh, establishment, and especially those uh, facilities which can hire specialities and health services which are in need in the kingdom. For example, a medical resort, and we believe that uh, that would enhance the medical tourism in the kingdom. Uh, and I would emphasize that all of these efforts are, uh, are a continuation and parallel efforts with the direction of our government, especially with what His Royal Highness Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the Crown Prince, uh, the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, who led and directed us in, um, in supporting the uh, medical field and uh, uh, specifically medical tourism. Uh, of course, uh, all w these efforts taken uh, to strengthen the health uh, field and uh, to reach more sustainable health services within the kingdom. And that was medical consultant uh, Dr. Hesse Suba Aldosari. Thank you for joining us. Tamkina announced the work on a number of programmes related to supporting the wages of Bahrainis and the professional development in a number of fields, based on the Royal Directives of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. More in this report. On the sidelines of the announcement of agreements between the executive and legislative authorities for the fiscal years 2023-2024, which called for launching initiatives to increase salaries in the private sector through programs to support the wages of Bahrainis in a number of specializations and professions, expanding career development programs for Bahrainis and encouraging institutions to increase the percentage of Bahrainization, Temkin announced the launch of a number of initiatives aimed at integrating Bahrainis into the labor market. The launch of these initiatives comes in order to expand the range of beneficiary groups and provide them with the skills required in the labor market which supports their development and various careers where work is underway to implement a study of the required skills in nine different economic sectors. These initiatives are integrated with the efforts of Temkin to provide support to private sector institutions that believe in developing their human resources, which is part of Temkin's strategy that includes supporting the development and growth of enterprises, developing the ecosystem for entrepreneurship, raising the percentage of participation for Bahrainis, and training according to the requirements of the labor market, which contributes to enhancing the economic impact and sustainable growth.